Hey there, Dr. Alan Christensen here with you. I want to take a deep dive into thyroid antibodies, Hashimoto's antibodies. Now, they're an important topic because they, they show that someone has Hashimoto's, people track them, people think about them. There's been a lot of thought about what controls them, but I want to share some nuances about them because they're a little odd. There's some things you wouldn't expect. <laughs> so the first big thing you wouldn't expect is that not, not everyone with Hashimoto's has thyroid antibodies. In fact, 40-50% don't at any given point in time, and even more than that, won't ever. <laughs> so it can happen that if you're tested here, they may be negative even if they're positive at other points. So that's one big one. Along that same line, antibodies change a lot. You know, if you checked your antibody scores three times a day for three weeks, you may see different scores every single time. You know, some measurements are very predictable and very consistent. Like, like height, if I really stand up straight and tall, I might get to be just about six feet <laughs> if I give myself a quarter of an inch for hair, I'm probably there. But I'm not gonna be 20 feet on Tuesday and I won't be two feet on Monday. But thyroid antibodies can move that much and more. You could quite literally have negative thyroid antibodies on one test and recheck and have them be 600 or 2,000. They can be up and down all over the place. So probably the biggest takeaway that I want you to have is to know that they, they do wander around and don't assume that if they've gotten higher than they were before, that doesn't necessarily mean you're doing something wrong. <laughs> and at the same token, maybe you went very restrictive on your diet and a test shows your antibodies are lower, that doesn't mean you have to do that. It doesn't mean that they, that they even affected it. So it really takes multiple readings over time to see stronger trends because there's so much randomness found in that. So how important are they? When should you test them? You definitely want to test them when someone's getting diagnosed to get a sense about if they're there or not. Just have another piece of evidence confirming Hashimoto's. When they are exceedingly high, like we're talking greater than the 2000 range, they can be predictors of your risk for other versions of autoimmunity. So that's, that's important. If you see your readings are consistently way up there like that, you may want to track them more often and confirm that they do come down. If you are in the more common ranges to where they're positive, but they're not through the roof, they're not really that relevant to your day-to-day -day health after you've been diagnosed, after you're doing all the right things for treatment. And if you do optimize and stabilize your blood levels of TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, thyroglobulin, the antibodies being up and down a bit within a typical range is not a big predictor of your health or your symptoms. So which ones do you test? Well, there's thyroid antibodies and there's thyroid inflammation, and they're kind of lumped together. So the antibodies, we have antithyroglobulin, we have antithyroid peroxidase, and we have thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulin. Now, the first two are affecting the gland's absorption of iodine and formation of nutrients. That last one, the thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulin, or TSI, that affects how your gland responds to being told to work. Now think about it this way, TSI, imagine like the capital letters of each, if you could just draw two lines, you'd have TSH, right? You could turn TSI into TSH. So they're almost the same thing. So having TSI, having that antibody, is just like TSH is to your thyroid. It makes your thyroid work, even if your brain doesn't want it to work. So it's more commonly associated with Graves. But there is overlap to where some with Hashimoto's have Graves as well, they've got TSI. And many with Graves also have Hashimoto's. They may, they may have high TPO levels. The last one to think about in this context is thyroglobulin. So we talked about antithyroglobulin. There's also just thyroglobulin all by itself, no anti, or TG for short. And this is an important one to track independent of the antibodies because it's a marker of thyroid inflammation and thyroid tissue growth. So the, the nutshell is that high TG thyroglobulin points towards possible present or emergent thyroid cancer. So I would even say thyroglobulin is more critical to track on a regular basis than the antibodies are unless your antibodies do run very high, greater than the thousands. So if you're ever having to pick and choose financially about your labs, think about thyroglobulin a couple times a year, antibodies once a year. 
Other markers, great ones to look at quarterly to confirm you're stable. So Dr. Christensen here. We just took a deep dive in thyroid antibodies, and I'll talk to you again really soon. Take great care. Bye-bye.